Navigating workbooks with lots of sheets can be tedious. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to dynamically list Excel sheet names with hyperlinks to help users easily navigate the file. It requires an old 4.0 macro function called getWorkbook, and this means that the file must be saved as a .xlsm file type. But don't let that put you off, it's super easy and doesn't require any VBA programming. Let's take a look. The getWorkbook function has two arguments, typeNum, which refers to various properties in the workbook. Number one returns the list of sheet names, and that's what we'll be using. And then name text is the name of the workbook that you want to get the sheet names from. We're going to omit this argument and it will simply return the names from the active workbook. Now Excel 4.0 macro functions like get workbook can't be typed into cells like the functions we know and love today. They must be defined in a name. So let's do that on the formulas tab. I'm going to define a name. We'll call it get workbook. And in the refers to, we simply enter the function. Notice it's got a period in the middle of it. And we want the first type, which is the sheet names. Click OK. Now, if I reference that name in a formula, it returns the list of sheet names and they're in a horizontal array. But I want a vertical array, so I'm going to wrap it inside transpose and then that will give me a vertical array. And you can see it gives me a list of the file name and then the sheet names. Now I have Excel for Microsoft 365 with dynamic arrays, so my formula spills the results to the cells below, and you can see that range denoted by the blue box. If you have Excel 2019 or earlier, then you need a different formula, but more on that later. First, I just want to explain what Get Workbook does. Now, I only want the sheet names, so I'm going to write a new formula that's going to remove the file name and we'll use replace to do that. You could also use the substitute function. So the old text is going to be the list of sheet names returned by get workbook. And I want to start at the first character. The number of characters, well, that's going to vary from workbook to workbook. So let's use the find function to locate the position of the right hand square bracket in the file name. And we want it within the text returned by get workbook. And the start number argument for find, well, I want it to start at the very first character. So I'm just going to omit that, which will default to one. The new text that I want to replace the file name with is nothing. So we're just going to enter two double quotes for blank. And lastly, to ensure that the formula dynamically updates, I'm going to append the volatile function now wrapped in the T function. We do this because now, which returns the current time, triggers a recalculation of the defined name. And the T function returns blank when the value returned isn't text. Well, now is returning time, which is a number, so it's going to return text always. And the only reason we're appending the now function is because it's volatile and that triggers the recalculation of the defined name, which is required to update the list of sheet names. Remember, we want this to be dynamic. So I'm just going to copy that formula. I'm not going to enter it into the cell because it will just return an error. Let's define a new name. We'll call this sheet names and I'll paste it in the refers to and we'll click OK. Now, if I enter it in a cell here, remember it's returning a horizontal array. So let's wrap it in transpose. So it gives me a vertical list. You can see it spills because I have dynamic arrays in Excel for Microsoft 365. But you can see it's only showing me the sheet name, which is what I wanted. Now in all versions of Excel, so Excel 2019 and earlier and Excel for Microsoft 365, we can use the index function with sheet names to return the list. In the row number argument, I'm going to use the row function. I'm just going to reference row A1. The row function returns the row number of a reference. Well, A1 is on row one. So it's going to return row number one. As I copy this formula down, A1 will become A2 and that will return the second sheet name and so on. So let's press enter and I'll just copy it down to show you. You can see if I go past the end, we get errors. So we want to hide those errors. Let's wrap it in if error. If it returns an error, we want nothing. 
And now if I copy it down, it'll hide those errors. Now the reason to copy it down is so that when I add new sheets, they're automatically included in this list. Of course, what good is a list of sheet names without hyperlinks to take you to those sheets? To solve this, we can nest the index formula inside of hyperlink. So let me leave if error at the front. The link location, well, that's going to be a combination of characters. First of all, hyperlink needs to know the file name and we can use the shortcut hash or the pound sign followed by an apostrophe. And then we want to wrap that in double quotes because this is text and append it to the sheet name. Then I need to tell it what cell to take me to. So at the end, I want a cell reference. So let's take us to cell A1. So and apostrophe exclamation mark A1, close my double quotes on that piece of text. So that's my link location. It's going to be the pound sign, the sheet name, and then the cell reference. The next argument of hyperlink is the friendly name. This is just some text to help the user know where that link might go. We'll use index to return the sheet name. So we'll just copy the index formula and I'll paste it in there. And I'll close parentheses on hyperlink. This is my value if error still there. Press enter. And then let's copy it down. And now we have hyperlinks. Now you might like to format them in the typical blue font and have it underlined so it looks like a hyperlink. So if I click on this, it takes me to cell A1 on sheet one. If I click on this one, it takes me to cell A1 on sheet two and so on. And if I add more sheets, they're going to automatically be included. So let's do that. We'll add sheet 10. It's added at the front and notice it hasn't updated. And that's because I haven't triggered a recalculation of the file yet. And we can do that in several ways. For example, we could enter new data, deleting or inserting rows or columns will trigger a recalculation, saving a workbook, and of course, pressing F9 to recalculate. So let's press F9. Now I have sheet 10 included. Notice that my sheet names are in the order that they appear in the file. If I move the sheet to the end, that's going to also trigger a recalculation. And you can see now it's at the end. I haven't had to do anything. Likewise, if you rename a sheet, that will trigger a recalculation. And now this one's correctly updated. If we hide a sheet, you'll notice that it's still in the list. But if I try and navigate to it, the hyperlink won't take me there. So whilst you can't exclude hidden sheets from this list, it's good to know that if someone tries to navigate to it, it's not going to take them there. Now, if you have dynamic arrays, you might be wondering if this can all be done using spilled ranges. And the answer is kind of. It requires the sheet name and hyperlink to be in separate columns. So here in column F, I've already got a list of sheet names. It's dynamic. We can see that it's a spilled array. And in column G, I can insert my hyperlink formula. So I'm going to build my link location again using the hash to give me the shorthand for the workbook name. We'll join it to the sheet name here. And in order to make it dynamic, I'm going to select the whole range and notice it's put in the spilled range operator, the pound or hash sign. So as my list of sheet names grows, the hyperlink function will automatically pick that up. Next, we need to tell it what cell in the sheet we want it to take us to. So we'll go to cell A1 again. And lastly, we need to give it a friendly name. We can omit this and it will just give us the whole sheet name string. And let's just take a look at what that looks like. You can see there, it doesn't look particularly nice. So the nice thing about the friendly name is it's like an anchor text. So we'll just put in go to sheet. And now if I click on it, it takes me to cell A1 in the current sheet. This can't take me to sheet two, remember it's hidden. This will take me to sheet three and so on. Now you might be thinking, why can't I just replace this with the defined name sheet names that we created earlier? 
I can tell you it will not work. So this is the next best thing for those of you who want to use dynamic arrays. Now the upside of using this technique is I haven't had to copy it down extra rows. It will automatically pick up new sheets. Let's add one to prove the point. Obviously I need to trigger the calculation. So let's just move it to the end and that will trigger the recalc. So you can see this formula and my hyperlinks have automatically updated. I haven't needed to edit any formulas or copy them down extra rows. So there's an upside to using the dynamic arrays. Now this technique has a few limitations. One, it includes the hidden sheets, but remember the hyperlink can't open a hidden sheet. Two, it requires the file to be saved as a .xlsm and you need to enable macros for the formula to work. If you open this file and you haven't enabled macros, you're going to get a load of name errors. And lastly, it requires recalculation to add those new sheets to the list. And we can see that here, this formula doesn't have the T now functions appended to the end. So in order to recalculate this, I have to F2 to edit and press enter and then it recalculates. So just keep that in mind. You need to trigger the recalculation. If worse comes to worse, you press the F9 key. I hope you found this useful. You can download the Excel file for this lesson and a complete list of Excel 4.0 macro functions from the link here. If you like this video, please give it the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.